Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast for our final segment of the day, where we're just going to be running through some of the biggest storylines from the MLB yesterday, starting with the fact that we have a new number one in the American League, as yesterday we saw the Cleveland Guardians overtake the Baltimore Orioles for the best record in the American League. So the Guardians got out to a hot start yesterday against the Detroit Tigers. They were facing Kenta Maeda, who has continued to just really be struggling for that Detroit staff lately. He got through just two and two-thirds innings. He allowed seven hits, one walk, and six earned runs. So the Guardians quickly got out to a 7-3 lead there. But the Tigers did come back to make this thing interesting. Ben Lively ran into some trouble himself in the sixth inning with a couple long balls from Urshela and Malloy, and they actually ended up tying up the game, and this went into extra innings. So, you know, the Guardians, a couple of consecutive close games that they had against the Tigers, sort of, you can make an argument, almost even got away with one on what would, what would it have been Monday night when the two teams played where... Um, Mark Canna grounded the ball out to the shortstop who just sort of overran the ball and instead of turning a double play to end that eighth inning, they ended up scoring and breaking the 0-0 tie. That was the one run of the game. So, you know, a couple close ones between Cleveland and Detroit the past couple days, but... You know, the Guardians were ultimately able to bring it home in the 10th inning, but it was scarier than it had to be. By the way, quickly here on the Guardians, just want to take a moment to give credit to Jose Ramirez, who has been incredible as of late. And I do feel like it's almost, it's one of those weird things where you call somebody underrated for so long that the reputation almost turns that he's a little overrated. He's not overrated. He's really good. And now I think that people understand he's really good, but with everybody still calling him underrated, it's kind of setting him up for slander. And Ramirez was just unbelievable yesterday and he's a great player, but six plate appearances, he singled, singled, doubled. And then for the rest of the game through his last three plate appearances, he was intentionally walked. So you know, I've been seeing some of the slander lately for J-Ram. If these MLB teams are going to respect him, you should too. But, you know, the Guardians end up winning that game. And then on the other end, the Baltimore Orioles ended up getting blown out by the Cubs 9-2. to And we see the Guardians, you know, same amount of wins. They are now 57-33. and But they take a half-game lead over the Orioles, who are now 57-34. and And the Guardians are just a feel-good story to me. Now, if we're talking about, you know, right here, who we're feeling better about down the second second half of this season, I am easily going with the Orioles, of the team that I have more confidence in. But, I mean, this has just been a really impressive season for the Guardians who especially after Shane Bieber went down earlier this year it felt like they were you know kind of in for it and that just has not been the case with their offensive explosion and you know represented by four hitters in the all-star game so you know again just a feel-good story there in Cleveland and you know are probably they are in a prime position to be an actual postseason threat so We will see there. But as we are looking at the top of the standings, looking at the National League, we had a matchup between the number one and number two teams in the Dodgers and the Phillies. Now, unfortunately, last night's game did not live up to expectations as Bobby Miller, who was so much fun to watch during last season, his rookie year, the fact that he has just been deep on that struggle bus this year, where in this game, four innings pitched, 10 hits, three walks in nine earned runs ended up giving up a grand slam in all of that as well his era is now up to 8.07 this season just a disaster and he called it the worst start of his career he's probably right there you know i don't know what is going on with him in particular but you know with all of the dodgers pitchers that are currently on the injured list and just yesterday we saw I think it was yesterday that Tyler Glasnow 
is going to be placed on the 15-day IL because of a back injury. It would be really nice to see Miller step up, and you know that just has not been the case. On Glass now, again, 15-day. Don't think it should be anything you know extremely concerning for Dodgers fans, but it just adds to a list of pitchers that have been banged up for them this year. And again, Bobby Miller, who was expected to be a bright spot on this pitching staff, has you know, really yet to show up in a big way for the Dodgers this year. But, you know, the Dodgers kind of just punted on this game after it was 9-0. It was, again, you know, just a little bit, you can say, emotionally charged, knowing that you were losing glass now and, you know, falling into this deep hole so early on. But, you know, they'll be on national TV again tonight on ESPN. I think that game probably probably tips off a little bit later um I'll, I'll double check that as we go on here but it's just game one of the series so um they are likely going to be able to bounce back we will see whether or not they're able to um game tonight is at seven o'clock so you can check that one out again still the top two teams in the national league but we'll just go rapid fire here on a couple of the other games from last night, the Yankees continue to slide. Last night, they lose 5-3 to three to the Rays. Carlos Rodon has just been really struggling during the first innings of a lot of these outings. And last night, that was the case again. The Yankees had briefly, you know, gotten out to an early lead, one nothing at the end of the top of the first. But it was pretty short-lived as the Rays put up four in the bottom of the inning. New new All Star Isak Paredes ended up hitting a I think it was a three run home run as well in that so again short lived but Ryan Pepio for the Ray the Rays ended up having I would say a pretty good outing overall it was his longest in terms of pitches thrown throughout the course of the season now he was dealing with some traffic especially in that first inning that did. Didn't do him any favors in terms of, you know, driving up that pitch count a little bit more. But he ended up having a pretty good start. And just briefly on that note for the Rays who are trying to find their way back into, you know, some sort of contention here. Also still at 500 and, you know, you can't really expect that organization to be buyers necessarily at the trade deadline. But, you know, we'll, we'll see where they go from here. Um, and then staying in that division as well, the Boston Red Sox were able to pull out a win thanks to a massive second inning where they scored eight runs. And, you know, the entire offense was in on this game. Rafael Devers continues to stay red hot. Saw some of the others step up in a big way as well. Willier Abreu hitting a home run to sort of break out of at least potentially maybe his cold streak. So, we will see whether or not that's something that we can, you know, count on moving forward here. And then the last thing I want to just point out, you know, stick around at around 3:30. Uh, Sam Menzi of the the host of the GSMC Baseball Podcast, he's gonna do a little bit of a deeper dive on Chris Sale, the who's had an unbelievable season. I'm I'm blanking off the top of my head. I don't have the numbers, but when we were looking at WAR earlier in the National League. I think Chris Sale is top five. And, you know, you you do always have a little bit of concern as to whether or not he's going to be able to stay healthy. But, you know, last night threw 100 pitches. Ultimately, it was five and a third, five hits, three walks. Did have two earned runs, but nine strikeouts. I mean, you know, what a redemption for him of being able to sort of hang in there and pitch with the best of them up to this point. So he has been, again, a massive revelation there for the Braves who haven't had the same level of offensive production. Now, last night, they are able to get enough uh, run support to help out Sale. They win the game 6-2 to two against the Diamondbacks. But that is all the time we have for today. Thank you very much for tuning into the GSMC Sports Podcast. Thank you to the GSMC Sports Network for allowing us to host this show. Remember to like, follow, subscribe wherever you keep up with us. Be sure to check us out on social media as well um, for more exclusive short content. And we will be back tomorrow afternoon, same time as always, 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern. And we will see you then. Take care. Mm -hmm.
Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet, damn it. 